Hello everyone, and I'm just going to get right into it. These are my top five success-minded books, okay? Uh, I'm going to try to explain what order I think you should read them in, but this really is subjective and depends on where you're at and what you can relate to. So, without further ado, number one is, you guessed it, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. I've talked about this book to death. I've made a video and sometimes two videos for every single chapter. You know what it's about. Why do I think that this is the first book you should read? Well, let me start by saying that it depends. It depends on two things. Number one, it depends where you're at in your mindset changing things. And number two, it depends on how much, how open-minded you are, I guess you should say. So, in theory, like in objective theory, this, is, this one is the best to start with. However, a lot of people, if they're not ready to make a change, this book will just do this right over their heads. So, why is it the best? Because it sets the foundation and framework for everything. It tells you how, how you should need to focus on your character ethic first before you can develop your personality ethic. Your character ethic is your inside, your subconscious, your beliefs. And if those aren't in line and those aren't ready to change, then all the other stuff that you're going to read in the other books I'm going to show you are just going to be fake. You're going to be a fake person. Just to sum it up. So, foundation, if you're ready. Number one. <clears throat> okay, this again. Now, this is number two. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Very popular one. A lot of people recommend this book. This again, it ties more into the personality ethic than the character ethic. Uh, I, this also depends why it should be number two. This depends on how much you've taken away from number one. And it's a little more wordy and less uh, sometimes like it's it's a more it's a I enjoy it, but it's like it can be quite a read some for some people. However, this is the groundwork. It gives you thirteen steps for think and grow rich. Rich doesn't necessarily translate to money. Rich is the money. Like the, all the examples are related to wealth. Though, kind of. Most of the examples are related to wealth. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's only for wealth. But it's from step 1 to step 13, I think it is, all having to do with how you think. And in that order. That's why this is number 2. This cannot be done properly unless you understand this. You, this is the foundation to this. 1, 2. Okay? Number three, these are more like uh, three and four can kind of go whichever way you want to go because they're, they're very similar. Number three or four, magic, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. The Magic of Thinking Big. So, Think and Grow Rich, The Magic of Thinking Big. This is the, this is the light version of this. Okay, in my opinion, it's very quick read. Look how big the words are. Like, look how line, like much line spacing there is. Okay, you know, you can get through this book in a week if you re like. Okay, maybe I'm just using my own bias, but it's not a hard. It's not a long read. It's not a hard read, and it's more entertaining, more engaging. The chapters are shorter. Uh, it's more of a boost. It makes it's more of a feel good book. It makes you want to kind of mm. this. I was reading this book specifically when I started this channel, rereading I should say, when I started this channel. Uh, and I, the specific chapter, if I can find it, was, sorry, I don't want to take too long here. Build confidence and destroy fear. That's not the chapter. There's a line in the chapter that I liked. Action, this was the line that kind of made me do this channel, not because of the fear, but anyway. Action dis action cures fear. Isolate your fear and then take constructive action. Inaction, doing nothing about a situation, strengthens fear and destroys con 
uh, confidence. That's not the line. When actually, the line was really, I don't remember what chapter it is, I can't, forgive me. So the line was, when action replaces fear, fear disappears. And then you are what you see. This is, this is why this one's a really good one. Also, if you don't, if you're not tr totally immersed into this mindset yet, maybe read this one first. My personal recommendation, if you want to do this the right way, is seven habits first, think and grow rich second, magic of thinking big third or fourth. However, if you're new to this whole thing, if you're not really a reader, if you're not really familiar with this kind of mindset talk, positive stuff, this is a good one to start with because it'll kind of at least make you feel more confident, right? Now, moving on to number four, which could be number three, depending on what it is, depending on your preference, really, because these two books are similar. So this is number four, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Now, I'm saying it the Italian way. It is an Italian name, but she probably says Sincero. This is more, okay. This book is more geared towards a female audience. However, it's not exclusively meant for a female audience. Uh, and this is the benefits, okay? These two are very similar, again. This kind of gives you the broad strokes of beginning to end, opening your eyes, explaining how subconscious works, explaining the value of meditation, all things I've talked about, but like she gives more of a broad strokes touching on various things. There was one chapter specifically near the end about abundance, which the way she explained it was the best. And that's why I really like this book, okay? This book is, she writes it as if she's, like how I'm talking right now, even more casually, like way, the way she writes is more relatable. She uses really good analogies, really good metaphors, more relatable for women, fine, but very, I actually laughed at some some parts uh, because she she's, her, she writes like she's talking, as if she's talking, which was great. It, was, it kept me, like, f I felt engaged. It was funny, like, the way she words things, and, like, she's, there are some curse words in here, which is great. Uh, yeah, so, three or four. My way of doing it was only because I had read this before this. However, you could go either way, right? More entertaining, though. This one's probably the most entertaining. It is the most entertaining of the five. And finally, oh, by the way, if I didn't explain this one, I did explain it. This one is good, actually, as a whole entire overview. It's like kind of like circling back once you've learned a few things. This kind of circles back and touches on everything. And, and her wording, may re you may find it more relatable, the way she explains it. And you're like, oh, I get it now. That's, that's kind of my biggest takeaway from this book. Really good. I'm going to read it again. I've, this is the only one of these books that I've read once. Every other, I've read two to three times. Finally, how to win friends and influence people. Do not read this book first. I, th th this is the only one I will confidently say you're doing yourself a disservice if you read this book first. Yeah, $15. It, just, it was on sale. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> So, do not, anyway, do not, that, oh, Dale, Car Dale Carnegie is the author, How to Win Friends and Influence People. What is it about first? Literally, as the thing title says, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Techniques and ideas to make people like you, be more charismatic, be a better salesperson, uh, even gets into leadership, how to get people to do what you want as a leader. Now, why do I say don't read this book first? If you read this book first and you don't have this changed, you haven't read the other four, you're gonna just come off as a manipulative, fake, annoying, uh, everything wrong with when you when you think of a salesperson that you don't like. This is that's the kind of person that read this book first and didn't focus on on this on the inside, right? These are techniques. This is the epitome of personality ethic. Now. I'm not saying that this is a bad book. It is an excellent book for technique and learning how to deal with people. Do not read it first. If you read it first, take it with a grain of salt. Read the other ones first if you haven't read them yet. This one is great and it makes you look at things differently. And you can be very, 
very manipulative with this book and people won't like it. Because I'm telling you, when you start getting into the realm of, of the world, like that everyone's had in this mindset, a lot of people have read this book and they'll know exactly what you're trying to do. If you start saying someone's name a hundred times, they're like, okay, I get what this person's doing. Because one of the things is, one of the chapters is about repeating that person's name. If you had these other books read first, then saying that person's name would come naturally to you after reading this book because you would... You wouldn't do it in a way that you're trying to manipulate that person. You would be like seeing the value of making a rapport with that person. You get why I'm saying to read this last? Reading this last, reading this first is like, I've used this analogy actually before. Reading this first is like a soccer player who's never run, who's never really learned the, the tactics of the game. And all they worked on was dribbling and shooting the ball. They're going to show up on the soccer field. They're going to make a fool of themselves. And they're going to just have wasted time on, on, on the end skill before the, the conditioning and cardio was there. And there it is. Those are the five. To reiterate, this is my order. Let me just go over it one last time. Number one, and my favorite book now, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Number two, and my second favorite now, Think and Grow Rich. Number three or four, Magic of Thinking Big. Number four or three, you are a badass. Also quite funny and entertaining. And number five, do not read it first. Read it last, how to win friends and influence people. Also, again, if you're all, you're kind of new to this, you don't really read very much or whatnots, this is also another good first one. I don't recommend it. However, I see, I see how this can at least segue you as a gateway book into the other ones. All right, that's the top five. What are your favorite books for success mindset? Let me know, please let me know in the comments. Please like if you like the video and please subscribe if you wanna see more of my content. Let's keep growing together. Always be reading, take care and have a great day.